My name is Bram, and this is going to be the Freeview demo. In this demo, we will be exploring ways of viewing and inspecting some of the outputs from the Recon All Processing Stream. We'll be using FreeServer's GUI-based viewer and editor for volume and surface files. You can get the full command to set up Freeview and follow along by going to the course schedule page and clicking on the demo link by my name. So if you go to the course schedule page over here, and you go down to the first day, you should see a demo link right next to my name. All right, so just click on that, and that will bring you to this page with a few commands. Um, before I continue, I just want to remind you to always call Freeview from the command line. Okay, it's good practice since you're calling it from the free surfer sourced environment. That's what we've done over here, and you have all the appropriate variables set. That's what we're going to do right here. Uh, clicking the doc application can cause some problems, so I just want you to make sure to use the terminal always when opening Freeview. Um, the first thing you should do is copy over the first two lines and press enter to set the subject directory variable and change to the and change to that directory. So we'll copy that and then we'll copy this and paste it over here. All right. So this first line is creating this directory, this variable, um, which is the tutorial data. Buckner data tutorial subjects, and then we've changed to that directory. So if I do print working directory, you should see that we're in the correct directory. All right. Next, I want you to copy the Freeview command with all the arguments and parameters. That's this over here. So if you go over here, um, copy, and then paste up here. Um, you have all you have the Freeview command and all the different parameters. All right. This command does quite a few things, so I want to go through it a little bit right now. Uh, Freeview, the first part of the command, will just open the Freeview GUI. So if I were to ignore or not in, or not write any of the following parameters, it would just open up Freeview and it would be a blank uh, GUI. All right. Um, but instead, we've decided to include some other parameters. Here we're doing we're including the v flag, the dash v, and that indicates that the following files will be volumes. In this case, we have the T1, the brain mask, and the white matter MGZ. Alright? After that, we have the dash f flag. Now that indicates that everything following it will be surface files. So here we have the left, left hemisphere white, the right hemisphere white, the right hemisphere peel left hemisphere peel, and the right and left hemisphere inflated surfaces. After that we have viewport and layout. These are just ways of customizing the way that Freeview opens. So layout will specify um, which layout will be, or sorry, viewport will specify the predominant orientation, in this case coronal, and the layout specifies what viewing layout will load, um, in this case one, which is a one by one uh, square. All these arguments can be manually set within Freeview, but this will speed things up. In the future, you can type Freeview dash dash help, like this, and press enter, and this will show you all the different arguments and parameters you can use to call Freeview in the command line. Uh, so now, uh, press enter to run this command. Over here. Now the surfaces may take, may take some time to load, but you can see how the progress is going based on this uh, progress bar in the bottom left hand corner of Freeview. Once everything is loaded, you should notice four different quadrants. Over here you have the top bar. That has editing options, layout options such as multi-pane, orientation, rest, and, and more. Uh, then you have this main viewport. Right now what you see is the brain mask volume with surfaces rendered on top. Then you also have the information panel underneath which tells you cursor or crosshair coordinates, intensities, and labels. Then on the left you have the loading toolbar and control panel. This is a list of loaded volumes and surfaces and adjustable parameters in addition to other features. Over the next 10 minutes I'm going to give you a quick run through of each of these four quadrants 
and um, feel free to follow along as I do. Over here in the, on the uh, top bar, you have editing options over here. This is called uh, Recon Edit, uh, and that should be talked about during the troubleshooting tutorial. And you can, go, you can go through that tutorial to learn more about this Recon Edit tool. Uh, there are four layout options over here, um, which will allow you to view the brain from multiple orientations at the same time, or multi-pane. Uh, you can change to the fourth layout to see the coronal, sagittal, axial, and 3D images. So here we have the coronal, and then sagittal, axial, and then three-dimensional planes. Um, you can also change the orientation. In this case, uh, it would be changing the orientation of the predominant um, of the predominant view, which is coronal in our case. So right now it's set to coronal, but if we'd like to change it to axial, we could do that, and then the larger one is going to be axial. I'm going to keep it as coronal for now. Um, if you are in the wrong part of the brain, or you've gone through, and you would like to come back to the uh, the way it op the way Freeview will automatically load the image, you can press the reset button up here. Uh, over here, we have the main viewport. Uh, you can scroll through this. You can scroll through a volume using the up and down arrows or page up and down. So I'm going to go anterior in the brain by pressing the up arrow and then posterior pressing the back arrow or the down arrow. You can also use other orientations to quickly jump through the brain. So if I want to go to the anterior section of the brain quickly, I can just press here and then that's where I am. If I want to go to posterior, I can click there in the actual view. You can also zoom in by, by using the wheel to scroll in or out or you can right-click and drag up and down to do a smooth um, zoom. You can also pan around an image by clicking down the middle, the middle wheel and then dragging. And then you should be able to pan around the brain. Uh, you can set re the red crosshairs by, click by left-clicking on the brain. And here's this crosshair, and you can get information about that in the information panel that we'll go in just in a second but you can move that by clicking with the left click. Um, and also, you should note that the highlighted box is the box that, uh, or is the orientation that you will scroll through if you use the up and down arrows. So in this case, uh, the coronal orientation, which is highlighted in green currently, is gonna be scrolling through when you press up and down. But if I were to highlight a different orientation, in this case, the uh, sagittal view, you press up and down and you'll be going through there. And what you'll notice is that the crosshair is actually over here, right? That crosshair is going to move uh, from left to right through the brain as I scroll through the sagittal view. Um, next we have the information panel at the bottom. This is useful for viewing information about each volume with the red crosshair or your cursor. So if I were to move the red crosshair over here, um, this is all the information that you get from that red crosshair. So right now we're looking at the brain mask, and that has an intensity of 69. Um, and then you have the coordinates in free server space of that uh, crosshair, which is 111, 117, 131. Um, now if I were to look on this side, what you're seeing is the actual mouse at that given moment. So it changes as you move around the mouse. But then if I were to set it at the position that I currently am, these two information um, columns should be identical. This is useful for copying or editing coordinates to report for a uh, paper or publication or to qu quickly jump to a certain location. So if I wanted to jump to, let's say, coronal slice um, 150, you can type that in and press enter and then you'll jump to that location. Now on the left you have the loading toolbar and control panel. This is a list of loaded volumes and surfaces. Here are the volumes and here are the surfaces. Um, the uh, volumes will be rendered in the order that they are listed. So in this case we have T1, 
Then on top of that, we have brain mass, and on top of that, we have the white matter volume. The white matter volume is unchecked currently. That indicates that it's hidden, and therefore it's not rendered on top of the brain mask. Um, we can say that the next topmost volume is the brain mask, and that's what we're seeing in the viewport over here. If we uncheck the brain mask, then what we'll see is just the T1. So now the brain mask is hidden, and we're looking at the T1. You should also know that the highlighted volume is the active volume. And that means that any action will be performed on the highlighted volume, um, which is not necessarily the volume being rendered. So in this case, the white matter volume is not being rendered, but any changes we make in these from these parameters are going to be applied to the white matter volume. Um, you can change the visibility or change whether or not something is hidden by either checking this, like we did before. You can also right-click and press Show. And you can also do uh, press Alt-V if you're on Linux or Option-V on Mac. So if I want to bring back the brain mask, I'll, I'll press Option-V. Uh, there you go. And it comes back. You can also cycle through volumes, which will change what is rendered on top of what. Uh, by pressing Alt-C or Option-C on Mac. So Option-C. There you go. So now the brain mask, now the T1 is on top. We'll come back to how we were before. You can also load and remove volumes. Um, like most of these actions in Freeview, there's more than one way to add or remove a volume. You can just press this to close the volume, or you can come up to File and then Close Volume. You can also um, load volumes in a similar way by clicking this, which is Load Volume, or over here, Load Volume. And again, you can do all of this from the command line, and that's what we did initially. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load a volume called the ASEG, which stands for Automatic Segmentation, which is a subcortical segmentation of the brain. And we'll open it with not a grayscale color map, but a lookup table color map. And I'll show you how to, and I'll show you how to do that in a second from here. Press OK. So now what we have overlay over the brain mask is the ASEG. And the ASEG is loaded with a lookup table as the color map. If we were to look at it with a grayscale, it wouldn't really make much sense. Okay. So here's the lookup table. And, um, and the control panel, which is below the toolbar, you get uh, general parameters for the current active window or the current active volume. You can modify things like opacity, render mode, and then uh, grace, grayscale segmentation or heat maps for the lookup for the um, color map. So, for instance, if we wanted to change the opacity of the ASEG, we have to highlight the ASEG to make it the active volume, and then you can change opacity. And now, what's happening is you're seeing more and more of the rendered volume underneath the ASEG, which in this case is the brain mask. Okay. Um, you can also window, so Freeview automatically interpolates uh, voxel data to display the image in a way that it thinks is best for the human eye. This is called thresholding or windowing. Uh, sometimes a large intensity bias or some other nuance in your data mess with the thresholding, which can make it hard to see what's going on. So for instance, if you're looking at the brain mask and you had a bad, uh, if you had a bad windowing, like, like, um, this, for instance, and you don't really know what's going on because it was it's a bad it's a bad uh, window. You can manually window by holding down the shift by holding down shift, and then dragging up, or down, or left and right. Left and right is going to change the contrast, and then up and down is going to change the brightness. Sorry, left and right is saturation, and up and down is brightness. You can also use an auto window by holding down shift 
and then middle and then holding down the middle uh, wheel and then dragging over the entire brain or the part that you think is that you want to see the best contrast between. Um, next we have the surfaces under here. Uh, you have the peel, the white, and then also the inflated surfaces. Uh, these behave uh, very similar to lead to the volumes, just like the hiding. You can show and hide them. But most of, most of the parameters are only going to be viewable from the 3D um, from the 3D viewport or the 3D layout. So now we can change uh, 3D to make our predominant view. And we can get rid of these slices. So what we're looking at now is the curvature information applied to our peel surface models with the green indica with green indicating the gyri and the red indicating the sulci. We can tur turn off this projection by going over to, well, first clicking on what we're looking at. So we're looking at the left hemisphere peel surface. So this red surface on the left hemisphere. And we can uh, click on that. So now it's the active surface. Just like we had active volumes, we have active surfaces. And then you can uh, go to the curvature setting and then turn that off. All right, so now we're no longer looking at curvature. And let's hide all of the other surfaces. So now all we're looking at is the left hemisphere peel surface. OK, uh, next we can change the color of the left hemisphere surface. So it, right now it's rendering it as a solid color. We could change that to pink, for instance. Um, you can also load overlays, annotations, and labels. Um, so right now I'm going to load a annotation file. So if you go to annotation, then load from file, I'm going to load the left hemisphere, left hemisphere A park annotation. So make sure that you're clicked on the right surface, which is the left hemisphere in our case, and that you're applying an annotation file from the left hemisphere. So this is the left hemisphere A park annotation. All right. Um, so you can load other overlays, annotations, or labels. I'm not going to get into this too much right now, but you can load a robust set of statistics and structural parcellation information onto the surface model. Um, you can also look at inf uh, information about these surface labels. Uh, in the information panel on the bottom. So if I were to click here, now the the um, the crosshair is over here, and you're seeing on the left hemisphere a part dot annotation that this is the pre-central gyrus. Okay. Um, there's some here's some additional features. A lot of people like to use Freeview to get uh, nice figures for their uh, publications. So a nice way of doing that is getting a screenshot through the GUI. You can come here and file and then save screenshot as to save a nice screenshot of this image. And you can do things like hide the annotations if you want to or hide the cursor. And then you choose where to save that. You can also do this from the uh, terminal. So if you were to open up Freeview, and want to immediately take a screenshot, you would use this flag, the dash ss or dash dash screenshot, and then give it the file destination and the magnification factor. This is gonna be one unless you change it to something else. All right. All right, so there are a lot more types of information that you can project onto the surfaces that we'll go over in future tutorials. Uh, you'll get experience viewing large sets of statistical overlays and structural segmentations for single subjects, group analysis, or fMRI processing. Lastly, if you ever find yourself lost while using Preview, you can check out the help. So over here, you can check out help quick reference. And this gives you a lot of information about shortcuts. Um, you can also go, like we did at the beginning, to preview help, which gives you a load of information as well just like any of our tools. 
or you can go to the Freeview General Usage wiki page, and that's over here. And it gives you a lot of information about how to use Freeview.